You perfected your wardrobe. What about the stuff not everybody gets to see? If you've been settling for store-bought underwear five packs, we got something that's going to change your life for the better. Talking about me undies. Now, what is me undies? Oh, just seriously soft, feel-good undies delivered right to your door. They're designed in LA and made from sustainably sourced micromodal, a fabric three times softer than cotton. Softer than soft, luxurious undies come in an ever-changing selection of classic colors, bold shades, and adventurous patterns, so you can tailor your undies to your personal style. And you know what? You can save time and money with a monthly subscription. I've got a few pairs of me undies. Man, they are real comfortable. Every time I work my way through the laundry and I got those me undies there that I'm going to put on my body, ooh, I get real excited because they are comfy. If you're not ready for a subscription, you, that's okay. You can save. This is because me undies is offering you 20% off your first pair. Just use your special URL, meundies.com slash doughboys and get 20% off your first pair. Go ahead, revamp your underwear drawer. You deserve it. I know you. You deserve it. Do something nice for yourself. Try me undies. You never spoil yourself. You're too worried about taking care of other people. You got to take care of you. You're the protagonist of your own life. Make sure you are comfortable. Go to MeUndies.com slash Doughboys. That's right. MeUndies.com slash Doughboys. Hey, guys. Scholar Brothers here along with Daniel Van Kirk. Yep. Uh, and on this week's Dumb People Town, we have a very special guest. He's with us right now. Say hello, Rob Cordry. My name is Rob Cordry. Oh, Ooh, thanks for coming out from under the blanket. Yeah. This episode's... Yeah, I'm going to go back under now. No, no, no. Stay for just a second. No, no, no. Come on, Rob. nice under here. Dumb no, 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 people no, no, no. doing dumb things on this show. We break it all down for you, and Cordry is en fuego. He's up everybody's ass, and now you'll know what that means. Yeah. Yeah. You'll yeah. know what that means when By you listening. listen to brings, the episode. He brings the flotto. He brings the flotto, guys, so check it out. Feral Audio. The culturally indispensable website Wikipedia is known for its obsessively comprehensive cataloging of highly specific minutia, from the ecology of Star Trek planets to the sexual appetites of classical composers. Yet on the Wikipedia page dedicated to a well-known Japanese noodle soup, the history section begins simply and cryptically, quote, The origin of ramen is unclear. What is known is that the typically chicken or pork broth-based noodle soup exploded in popularity after World War II when the importation of inexpensive American wheat made the hearty, calorie-dense dish plentiful and affordable. Mostly known in the U.S. because of the instant variety pioneered by Japanese scientist Momofuku Ando, in Japan, ramen restaurants are ubiquitous, and in recent decades, they've come to the States in areas with dense expat populations. In March of 1988, a Japanese chef named Hitoshi Hadanaka opened a nine-seat ramen shop of his own in Asahikawa, declaring his mission statement to his family as, I'm going to make delicious ramen. The shop expanded into a sprawling sensation across six provinces in Japan, and now has several international outlets across Asia and North America. This week on Doughboys, Hokkaido Ramen Sentuka. <laughs> Welcome to Doughboys, the podcast about chain restaurants. We're a part of feralaudio.com. Uh, if you'd like to support us, go to the website, click support, and uh, use our Amazon affiliate link. It helps out the podcast, helps the network. Uh, but right now, let me introduce myself. I'm Nick Weiger, alongside my co-host, before photograph come to life, Mike Mitchell, the Spoon Man. What the fuck, man? <laughs> that insult was courtesy of Tyler Moss. Thanks, Tyler. If you have an insult you'd like me to read on the air... Hey, uh, Tyler! <laughs> I'm going to kick the shit out of you. <laughs> Email roastspoonman at gmail.com. How are you, Spoonman? Not great after Tyler's bullshit comments. <laughs> I'm going to fucking kick his ass. It's time these fucking doughboys listener fucking nerds got their asses kicked. <laughs> I'm not going to let him insult me like that. Fuck you and fuck your fucking insult spoon man game. <laughs> I'm looking forward to you uh, like flying across the country to houses of individual listeners, knocking on their doors, and then just getting the shit kicked out of you. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler Moss. <laughs> Who I'm sure, so he sounds like a small pussy. He's going to kick my ass. <laughs> I'm going to bash his head in with a rock. Moss and rock go well together, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, howdy ho <laughs> to all of Spoon Nation out there. Let me see here. Here we go. I take coffee the way Monica takes her dresses. <laughs> With a little bit of cream on it. Okay. You guys can't handle it? Deadpool is the worst of them all. Where is that bash? One quarter portion. Uh, I hate the Force Awakens. The first time I ever orgasmed, my father saw it happen. Mamma mia! Not my town. Not any of my five towns. Obama out. 
All right. Thanks. Thanks for that nice little drop <laughs> from Evan Landman. <laughs> Evan Landman uh, uh, sent that in. Evan, I don't have a, a Twitter handle for you, but I, I appreciate it. Get fans excited for that upcoming Ghostbusters movie that hits this July. As July is when it comes out? Mm-hmm. You're very mad about that, right, Mitch? Oh God damn it! <laughs> Shut the fuck up! <laughs> I'm excited. I hope the I uh, I almost said girl Ghostbusters. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> I hope that the I hope that this new Ghostbusters is great. Yeah, I, I I want movies to be good. Why wouldn't you want a movie to be good? A hundred percent. It's fun to hate. Like it's fun to hate watch things, but on balance, life is better when the movie you're watching is good. I agree. I want things to be good. Yeah. And and uh, a friend of ours, Katie Dippold, friend of the podcast, uh, wrote the movie. And Dippold, she's great. one of the funniest. She's one of the funniest. Uh, she's great, and um, and I hope I hope it's I hope it's a big success. Godspeed, new Ghostbusters. And Dippold, Katie Dippold, asked to be on the podcast, rejected us. <laughs> You you asked her and she said no. She said no fucking way. <laughs> and I, I tip my cap to her to this day. She's I, smart. I probably respect her more than any prospective guest <laughs> for deciding this is not worth her time. No, apologies Correctly. to our guests who are about to introduce in a few seconds. Uh, you know what? I I, I got to make an apology to uh, on when we were talking about Ithaca. I said Sammy's wings. It's actually Napoli's wings. Okay. They have great. Well, Napoli has great wings. So I just want to apologize to. Uh, the guys who I lived in this dungeon with, uh, uh, Edie Kinkle, uh, Joseph Randy Aranda, uh, Mike White, uh, Dank, uh, Paul Gangrosa, uh, Luke Michaels, Luker, uh, uh, his nickname was Poov, uh, <laughs> Nate White, or Oids as they called him, uh, Evan Novick, Joe Rusty. Uh, did I hit everybody? I think I did. Uh, Timmy Greenf- Greenfield, I, I got to apologize to all those guys I went to school with. Uh, cause I really fucked up bad there. Um, so yeah, just want to let it know that it was, it was Napoli's instead of, uh, instead of Sammy's Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> what? <laughs> you list off like 12 housemates from a dozen years ago. They were great guys. I'm sure they were, they were better men than you. You piece of shit. <laughs> and you know what? Almost every one of them has kids. You should get your fucking seed to work. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if me having kids is a net positive for the world. <laughs> I think, I think this, this seed maybe should be the end of the line. <laughs> Would you get your baby a uh, gun-shaped pacifier? <laughs> anyway, I'm, I hope you have. If you want a kid, I hope you have one one day, and uh, Uncle Mitch is going to love him. Oh, right back at you, Mitch. Uh, hmm? you'll, you'll never... You'll never meet my children. Um, <laughs> let's introduce our guest. We're very, very happy to have him. An actor, comedian from Key and Peele and Silicon Valley, many places. One of the funniest guys around, Jeff Kenji Sloniker. Hi, Jeff. Hey, how's it going? He's oh, great. Jeff my is... God. Thanks for being here. Yeah. yeah. It's a, it's a relief because I think Jeff can make fun of both of us. <laughs> uh, you want me to start? Because like sitting here watching you guys, it's good. You know, I'm a big fan of the show. I've listened to like three, and, uh, <laughs> and watching Mike play those like those little uh, what are they called? The drop, drops. Drops. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I know that. Uh, watching him play the drop, you forget that he has an iPhone six plus because he's a giant and he's looking and he's he's giggling to himself while he's doing it <laughs> and playing it. And then like the biggest thing is like he's like so, you're such a bully on this show, really. Yeah. And you know he is the classic bully from those eighties like after school special. <laughs> yeah. Like, hey, back off, buddy. And he goes, oh, sorry, sorry, oh, so sorry. Let me find a giant rock to hide under. <laughs> I think that off the air you know what I, I i've kind of i've gotten this reputation as a bully on this podcast it comes from being completely uh, aggravated with weiger and all the dumb shit that he says <laughs> i'm a nice man off this podcast in fact a lot of people think i'm cool i'm a cool guy oh, in what boy. way what do you mean by cool i'm a cool i think people like me I, they like to be around with me i'm a i'm like a george w bush uh, <laughs> in his heyday right? in yeah. his heyday, people people want to get a uh, get a beer with me and i'm a nice man jeff you can attest that He's i'm a, a nice, nice guy man. yeah and uh and uh I, i've gotten this this i, I want to be the cool spoon man again and I want to be a, a cool, chill guy, uh, <laughs> which, you know, it usually comes around when you beg for people to think that you're cool. It's, yeah. uh, it's the best way for people to start thinking you're cool. Yeah, it's it's a it's an icebreaker. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> well, hold on a second. 
what is this the thing about composers sexuality what were you talking about i was just looking for a very specific minutia that they have on on oh. wikipedia but yeah they they have they get into very very minor details like like super long articles about you know 19th century uh women in the british you know women's liberation movement or something like that oh, you know, important okay. historical figure, but just like there's there's all sorts of detail about like very minor stuff i was confused by that i get that now okay yeah yeah no it's just like it's just two specifics i don't know <laughs> there were two random specific i don't even know if there is an article look at the the exact the what was the phrase let me look up my, my old thing uh highly specific minutia from the ecology of star trek planets to the sexual appetites of classical composers those are just two very specific classical things. composers were very they were very sexual and they, they were horny they were horny yeah. and they were like often bisexual right like it was like uh they they, they had flair they yeah 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 they like to it's funny to think of that the rock and roll like you know it's 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 they we're just always... thinking of amadeus right <laughs> yes i think that's all <laughs> <laughs> is there another one <laughs> uh i've never seen someone uh give up on comedy so much than there was two examples <laughs> jesus uh, also, if you look up cuckold on Wikipedia, is there is your picture featured at the top of the Wikipedia page? There, no, there's no there's no etching or engraving or woodcut of my face. Hey, Spoon Nation, if one of you out there can oh. set that up. <laughs> why don't you oh, get his face in the cuckold oh, article? Oh, that is horrible. A Wikipedia editor is going to undo that so fast, and your IP will be banned. So why not? You're speak, you're you're, 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 you're that vandalism. You're 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 a known cuckold. Who else is there? <laughs> not a what, known cuckold. What is like? Can you explain? I know what it is. I mm -hmm. go, yeah, yeah, I know what that is, but exactly what is it it's a cuckold is uh, someone who gets off on on seeing someone have sex with their significant other nick is well look that's a guy with a cuckold fetish yes a, a cuckold <laughs> like in shakespearean terms the cuckold oh. or, or in the canterbury tales the cuckold is just the guy who someone else fucked his wife and like now you're a cuckold yeah, where are yeah. the cuckold horns you yeah, will yeah um, and natalie i i want to make this clear natalie's never partaken in any of this she just married a cuckold and that's all that happened <laughs> so i'm an aspiring cuckold <laughs> She, yeah, I you, got my she, fingers crossed that this will happen someday. I think you're the most famous cuckold. <laughs> <laughs> Can't be true. You, you are now. Um, Jeff, uh, so I, uh, we've got a very interesting, very specific chain that I want to get into in a bit. Yeah. Uh, but first, I want to talk about um, uh, Japanese food in general. And uh, so, what, like, like, obviously, ramen is the focus of this restaurant, but where, where do you stand on Japanese food as a whole? Like, do you put, is it one of your favorite cuisines? Well, I'll tell you, it is. And, yeah. And a uh, little thing that a lot of people don't know is I'm, I'm half Japanese. And I would spend every summer because I was such a bad kid. My mom would send me to Japan every summer, so I just lived, every summer, every summer. <laughs> so I'd go to like markets with my grandma, and I'd get I I know how to speak Japanese, and it was just this really. It, it, at the time, I was like, oh shit, I gotta go back to Japan. Like, and now as I get older, I'm like, oh, what an amazing experience <laughs> that I had, and I didn't get to really enjoy because I was a kid that just wanted to be home riding my bikes with my with my friends. You yeah, know? and uh, but. I saw the evolution of Japanese food because when I would eat it at home, like when my mom would cook it, everyone would go, ew, you're eating green paper or why would you eat raw fish? And, you know, now we can get su obviously sushi and, and Ralph's, you know, like you couldn't do that before. And people were like, oh, no, I'm not eating. I'm not eating fish and I'm not eating raw fish. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's a real weird um, there's a there's a very like, I think, useful uh, cultural time capsule that it, the movie has not aged well at all. It, it like you watch it now and it seems racist. Uh, but there's a Ron Howard film called Gung Ho, starring Michael oh, Keaton, yeah. that was made in the '80s, and it's yeah. about uh, basically this Japanese automaker buys this uh, plant in Michigan, and um, it's just about this culture clash. But it's so funny to see them like there's like scenes. It's a, like from the '80s, like yeah. 30 years ago, and there's like scenes of. Uh, Mitch is fumbling at the floor for some reason. Oh, he just dropped his I phone. Dropped my phone. He, or he's... heart attack. Go. <laughs> you gotta be on high alert up here. <laughs> if you just go without saying anything, Am I, it's my nightmare to die during a doughboy. <laughs> but I mean, it would be a sweet release of death. Legend. Who oh, replaces you? 
I don't know, a bag of laundry. <laughs> uh, well, you have now retrieved your iPhone 6 Plus, which fits into your baseball mid-sized palm like a book of matches. He still has to, like, work at hitting yeah. each button so tiny. What the fuck? You're such a giant. Make fun of this robot next to me. No, you, you did that opening. I, I think if you challenged me and Mike to read that, uh, we you, we'd be here all night. <laughs> there's no way we get through that. No way. There's some tricky verbiage in there. Um, Ugh, verbiage. Fuck off. I'm not. The, <laughs> I don't think I'm necessarily nimble at at, at you know at, at getting all the words out. As you hear me some, sometimes fumbling on this podcast. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. People who are like like news readers. That sort of just that exercise always gives me respect for people who are just like reading the news and how they can are able to do that for like thirty minutes without fucking up. I'm like Jesus oh, yeah. Christ, that's so hard. Um, but anyway, gung ho. I think it's pretty easy. Anyways, go on. <laughs> gung ho. It's like there's there's scenes of like them making fun of eating with chopsticks, and they're yeah. they're, they're just like there's like a guy who like uh, grabs two pencils and like makes squinty eyes like a white guy and is like making fun of a of a dude for eating with chopsticks, which is so like that's so batshit that that yeah. was that. Recent. Listen, I, I I told I told Jeff this because I saw when when I when I first came to UCB I, I I've seen you do a Japanese character before <laughs> and I was and, and I think that like I was like back in the day I was like I thought it was it's hilarious obviously Jeff is very funny and I was like ooh that's like borderline and then I forgot you are half Japanese yeah. like like a I, it's I, I I forget that you're 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 fifty you're fifty percent Japanese yeah. your, your mother My is mother. is from Japan right yep. and she and was she born in America or did she come over or? born in Japan came over when she was nineteen. Wow. And, uh, she would like cry and look at the ocean and wish she could be on a boat going back to Japan. Oh my God! Yeah, it was. It's like tragic, but it was like she lived the American dream, and and now like she got me through college, kind of thing. That was her only dream. Uh, I think she should have dreamed a little bit further because <laughs> I came to LA to die. <laughs> I, I have a I have a bag of dust, and that's my career. <laughs> hey, look what I got! That's all of us. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we've all made a terrible decision, but uh, uh, I think you're doing great, and it's one of the funniest guys, and also knows his food well. Because uh, and listen, people are. We're going to get to some of your, your classic favorite places, but we're, we're going to use this episode. We know this is a specific place, and, and I, I, I said this to Jeff, and then he mentioned that there was one in Boston, and I got excited about it, like you said. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I told Mike, I was like, hey, this is a, a Japanese thing, and I want to be stupid and just do my race kind of thing. And then Mike's like, oh, I don't know, I don't know. And I was like, what about Benihana? He goes, oh, I don't know about Benihana. And I was like, well, there's this ramen place, and uh, there's one in Boston. He's like, yeah, let's do it. I'll pick you up. I'll take you. I'll treat you. Too. <laughs> what can I say? I love Boston, and uh, and 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 you know your and you know your food really well. Uh, uh, and we'll we'll get into the specifics of it. But is is ramen one of your favorite Japanese foods? Is that like yeah? I I think ramen. It, it, the the weird thing is it's becoming so popular. It, it's you know it's hit its peak I think, and it's it's just hanging out there for a little bit. But mm -hmm. uh, um, before this 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 popularity hit, ramen was known obviously as the dollar for five. You live off it. Yeah. You kill yourself because it you can't digest it kind of thing. But it was poor people food. So when I would say, oh, I'd love ramen, everyone's like, yuck, that's disgusting. You know? And I think that's a, that's a shift in the States, I feel like, within the past 15 years or yeah, so. Because yeah. I remember being in college and early 2000s, and yeah, the, all, the only ramen I knew, this is in LA where there's a ton of ramen restaurants now, but the only ramen I knew is what you'd get at Vons for, they were literally, ten, it was 10 cents for a pack of ramen. Yeah. And yeah. very, very different, obviously. The, like, yeah. What, what's it called? The the ramen, the, what's it, what's the what's ramen uh, called? Top ramen. Top, like, either top, top ramen, yeah, cup top of noodles. Ramen. Yeah, uh, I also hate. I hate when college kids are like, "Oh, I was so broke, I eat, I eat ramen." <laughs> yeah. I'm like, unless you're like a part of like the 15 percent of kids who go to college, you're a rich college yeah, kid, totally, and you just eat ramen. Fuck you. Uh, you you can't say that you're you, you just decided not to go to your fucking dining hall and you had ramen. You can't you can't talk this is, about this that. This is totally off topic, but I remember when I was in college, uh, I went 
to lunch at the strip club. Like everyone's like, let's go to the strip club eat lunch. And I was like, all right, that sounds awful, but I'll go. <laughs> and it was like barbecue burgers or whatever. And it was $10 and you got the day shift uh, hookers, uh, strippers, you know. And I remember this stripper coming on and she's like, you know, pretty like whatever you you like about strippers. And then the next day I was in college, I was on the campus and I was walking and this girl dropped her books. And I hel- I went down to help her and I was look- I was picking up her books and I looked up right into her eyes and I'm like, oh my God, I just saw you at the strip club yesterday. Oh my God. And that that was like that one moment where you go, oh, strippers do strip to put themselves Papers through college. college. Yeah. Those yeah. are 100%, those are people who are eating ramen because they can't afford it. But I, I, I got yeah. sick of too many white collared fucking assholes being like, I gotta eat oh, ramen. Oh, sure. Yeah. Sure. They suck. Like guys like Weiger. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Take it easy. But yeah, I, I get what you're saying. There is, there is like, I feel like a little bit of, of poverty <laughs> cosplay that takes place among college kids of like trying to pretend like they're not getting, you know, a, a grand a month from mom and dad. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. You white, I, white collared cuck. <laughs> 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 like I work a nine to five in an office, then come home and watch my wife get railed by other guys. Oh, oh like crank off. That's your dream scenario. <laughs> Natalie's just too too great of a person she shouldn't be with you this um, this, ooh, this moving in <laughs> that's the, what those guys do you know they go oh you know she deserves better i'm just yeah, kidding yeah, yeah. i'm kidding you want to go shopping together i don't know if i mentioned this on the podcast before but uh when mitch and i were in new orleans we we're both in new orleans for a mutual friend's uh wedding and uh nally was there uh with us and uh there was a point me and nally and mitch went out for dinner and i think nally had excused herself to go to the restroom and uh, Mitch leaned to me and said, uh, I'm going to uh, push you into a grave and take Natalie home as Mrs. Mitchell. <laughs> and you nervously laughed it off. Yeah. <laughs> I can't tell I can't tell if you're making you were... up this story to make me look weird or if I actually did you do actually that. You actually did do this. You may have been drunk. <laughs> collar gets tighter you're like stop pulling me close (laughs) she came up with a plan (laughs) we gotta find a fucking white ass grave (laughs) that's the only hold up you fat fuck (laughs) your joke is if I've never like I didn't lose weight there's a point where it's heavier that I lost I lost the weight yeah you're a sellout and you're still a fat (laughs) you're a sellout but you're still a fat Fuck. <laughs> I've got to know you like, more more when you've lost weight than yeah. when you were bigger. Did, were you the same person? Like, like same personality? Right now you, you speak and talk like a skinny person. Oh, interesting. That, that, you know, I do have an issue with that because I feel like fatter guys... People are just like they're dumb. Like, uh, like you, you just get this thing that they're like they're dumber. Yeah. And I and I get that, and I'm like, yeah, whatever. And I can't, you know what? Sometimes my brain doesn't work, and I can't formulate a sentence. So I, they're right. I am dumb. But I, but it, 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 it's a nasty reputation, and it's hard to shake. And it is specifically because like you're a big beefy guy, and people just have that in their heads. They, they, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a thing that's been happening for years. Okay, let me say this. I'm a fat guy, right? I'm, I'm in that territory. I'm on that. You've side. also lost. Wait, we've, lost, lost we've all had roller coasters. Yeah, it's come back with with vengeance. But <laughs> when I'm looking at both of you sitting over there, and you said pick the the stupid guy. I would point to you. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Who do you want to like compete in a quiz show with? I'd go, Mike. <laughs> Hands down. No no problem. <laughs> you know, you're probably right. <laughs> also, who do you want to compete in a foot race with? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. I'll outrace you any day. <laughs> um, uh, you're going to turn that into some me being racist no 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 no. (laughs) um jeff i i will say i i saw some of your bad boy attitude at one point oh yeah uh we were in matt besser's oh geez we were in matt besser's sketch writing class together this is about (laughs) eight years ago at least if not more uh and uh you got up in the middle of the class and this is one of the the hardest i ever laughed ever Besser, Matt Besser, uh, who's uh, been on the podcast, he's great. He was the Krispy Kreme Love episode. Um, he was he was giving notes in the class, and you stood up, 
and you went up to the front of the class. This is while he was just ta- giving notes, and you like kind of like were hunched over, and you went up to his desk, which was a square block, and there was change on the desk. I don't know if you remember this, and you took the change off, and you left. And Besser, like you left the room, and Besser was like, hmm, and was like confused. <laughs> And then <laughs> about five minutes later, you came back in the room with a bag of chips and a drink. <laughs> I left. <laughs> I laughed so it was, it was I laughed more at that than I laughed at any sketch the entire year. It was so fucking funny. I, oh I have God. no memory of that. <laughs> you might have been. I don't know. I don't know what mind state you were in, but it was the funniest. It was so funny. I, it was better than every shitty sketch we read. And uh, do you ba- remember this part of that class? Because Nick Wegner, my friend, that's in the Midnight Show with me. Oh yeah, always loves to bring up this one. Uh, Bess, I, Besser asked me a question. I answered wrong. And he looked at me, shook his head, and goes, and you want to teach at my theater. I do remember that. I remember that, and I was like, oh, this is very awkward. And you want to teach at my theater. teach at my theater. I was like, ooh. It it definitely felt like a discussion that you guys, I was thinking, would happen outside of the classroom or something later. Well, here's the flip side. I never asked to teach at that theater. <laughs> I never Weird. did. I was like, what? Uh, this is horrible that you just called me out, but I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> I See, I feel like us big guys, sorry to lump you in with me. Yeah. They, they, like, uh, they, people just don't trust them. No. And Sonica's one of the funniest guys. I got a note once that said, you know, uh, it was uh, Miles Stroth goes, just thought you're a big fat idiot and uh you're a lot smarter than i thought and i was like thanks <laughs> and they walked away and i was like okay that's like the bo- that that's like the most you'll get is like a begr- begrudging like yeah hey, you're not as fucking dumb as i thought you were. <laughs> you're, du- you're still fat you fat smelly piece of shit do you think i mean like but do you think that's a that's universal to bigger guys or, because I also th- say that you guys are both kind of a type of big guy, and that you're kind of like a like a kind of an outgoing kind of, um, you know, you dress casual, you're kind of a you're kind of a. Some people might say I, I think they'd be mistaken, but they might say like you're kind of like a big bro, you know. Yeah. And I feel like that's like a, a different than like a. a I don't know. I'm trying. To, I, I don't know what type I'm thinking like of. Like an out of breath, like sick fat man. You're trying to say? <laughs> <laughs> well, like I think that's different from like say a Jeff Garland, who's like yeah. maybe a little bit more of a classy large man. What the fuck? <laughs> 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 Jeff Class- Garland's much more classy than us. <laughs> yeah, he breathes just as hard as we. All do. right, so I, maybe this is what now I'm saying. Say is, definitely harder than us. Okay. Yeah. All right. Like, the Jeff Garland bad example. How about a pre weight loss John Hodgman? Used to be a little larger, right? Mm-hmm. Mm, okay, right? Like that's like kind of like a like a like a an egghead who happens to be of size. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Like, okay, so when I lost a lot of weight, I lost fifty pounds. Right? Yeah, I'm gaining it back. But when and, and here's here's I'll give you a great progression here. When I, I was the bro dresser, I lost weight. I started going to J. Crew, which I could oh, never yeah. go to because I couldn't fit in the clothes. Their sizes. Yeah. J. Crew is a sizes store. I fucking hate them. Tiny sizes. I yeah. started wearing J. Crew, going, "Oh, I look good." I I cleaned up my act, and then as I started gaining weight, all of a sudden the workout shorts came back. <clears throat> yeah, the hoodies came back. You don't leave home without it, kind of thing. Oh yeah. And uh, you wear them out till they stink, and you're like, "Oh, I can't wear that. I got to put it in the dryer." Would shrink some. But it's, it's, it's also it's comfy. Not, it's, it's, it's not. It's ninety degrees out, and you're still wearing a hoodie. I know that. <laughs> I know that feeling. So um, I think I think it's more of a comfort. Yeah, is, I gotcha. Right? That's why you get the bro feel, cause like. You're wearing flip flops and shorts out, and everyone's like, "What? You're gonna wear that out to the restaurant?" Yeah, no, yeah. I, 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 that that's the thing. I, I, even when I lost weight when I was in college, so mine was a long time ago, and then I've just pro- 
gotten progressively fatter. Uh, it was one of those things where I refused to take like be a guy who like took his because I because I rode crew and that's why I lost all my weight and they were all uh, a lot of them were dorks yeah and uh and I just did it to lose weight and there were other guys who were big guys who like immediately were like I'm gonna take my shirt off and walk around with my shirt off and I never I made sure to never <laughs> do too. that because I never wanted to be that guy sure. but you do it, it is funny when people lose weight they can be like that sort of thing of like hey he's dressing smart and he, yeah. and, he, and, he and he he's really gotten his shit together. Uh, I, you know, I would, you know, I, I pitch a lot out here and I was pitching shows. And when I lost weight, I honestly, it might be in my head, I feel like I got more respect in the room. Interesting. I really did. Oh, I really I'm sure. Did. I, 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 here's my thing. When I lost weight, I saw me and I looked like a big boggle, bobblehead. <laughs> and I was like, well, I lost weight. And I'm just like, now I'm just kind of like a thinner, ugly guy. <laughs> <laughs> you lost your character. Yeah, I'd rather be a big guy. And they'd be like, oh, he's a big guy. He's not bad looking, He's a, but he's a big guy. Yeah. And when I lost weight and I was like, Ugh, you fucking, you look gross. And you're just like, now you're thin. Like, what the fuck is this? It was it's like a, an abusive father in the Peanuts universe. <laughs> It was, it was, it was, I, 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 I like to think of myself, a, a, a big guys like us, like kind of like the ogre from, from Revenge of the Nerds. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, like we're, we're, we're fun, we're fun party dudes. We're yeah. not, we're, we're not, I, I, I don't consider my, you know, I've been around the smelly fat guy. Oh, that oh, sucks. Gosh. And I hope that I'm not secretly one of those smelly fat guys, but I've never, I, I honestly, I've never thought of you as a smelly fat guy. No, me yeah. Either. I've never, I, 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 I take care of myself, but I got to lose some weight. We, and Jeff and I have talked about this a lot. Yeah. We got, we're, we're talking about getting a little competition going to see it's, if we can lose some weight. It's tough. I think you guys should do that, and 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 <laughs> weight loss is weight loss is very tough. Uh, um, not uh, like I was reading an article, and and by the time this podcast is out, it'll be probably a month old. Uh, but it's in the New York Times. If I remember, I'll, I'll reshare it on, on the, the double social media. Loser. Yeah, and, and it's oh, yeah. it's real. It's really. Did you read this article? Uh, it's about the biggest loser. It. Yeah, it's 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 worth a read. Um, because I have someone who who like you, Jeff. I like I've lost a I lost a good amount of weight, but I have regained. You know, a. a decent amount i'm like i'm not like i'm not as thin as i was at my peak and this article is basically about these biggest losers who are from the tv show who are the most successful at losing weight have lost hundreds of pounds and just it's just about how the yo-yo is basically inevitable because your just metabolism is just trying to get you back to what it considers homeostasis uh where your body was before so you know you might be a 495 pound guy you go down to 170 your body's fighting back all of a sudden you're 300 pounds you're thinner than you were before but you're still you know, heavier than maybe you should be. It's it's, it's really interesting. <laughs> I'm saying if there's... I'd rather be the fattest man on earth than listen to that <laughs> shit again. <laughs> Whenever you fake sleep, all I can think is like he definitely has sleep apnea. That's, <laughs> that's so gentle how he's sleeping. That's so fake. <laughs> it's probably more like <sighs> <laughs> Mike. Mike, are you alright? <laughs> yeah. My my father, who was a fit man, and uh, he he stayed in shape his whole life, uh, uh, and. He, uh, he, 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 you, I could hear him snoring in my room with his door closed and my door closed. So yeah. I am for sure a snorer and it gets, it gets worse when you, when you, uh, gain weight. I've, oh, I've yeah. woken myself up snoring. Have you done that before? I have. I, I'll have that and I'll have, I'll wake, I'll wake up. I'll have like little apneas and they'll also have night terrors, which will just, I'll just like start screaming in my sleep. What? And, really? Yeah. Like I'll just like start freaking out and having like a panic attack in my sleep. And Natalie will usually wake me up. Natalie, you <laughs> should. <laughs> the offer's still up. It's, yeah. It's I'm, getting better. And I'll also have sleep paralysis. You guys ever have sleep paralysis? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's a motherfucker. I had sleep paralysis. Analysis and I ran into Jack Allison's room, who was my roommate at the time, and I was like, hey, man, you got to help me. There's a tarantula on the wall. And Jack was like, holy shit, <laughs> and got really scared. Wait, isn't it? I think I think you've got, you're got you having something different. That's not sleep paralysis. I think that's a different phenomenon. Oh, no. No, wait. wait hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> he was stiff as a board. When he did it. <laughs> no, 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 no. It, 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 was, it was sleep paralysis because I... Right? Isn't that no, is, you might be thinking of sleep walking or you had some sort of No, isn't that what the nightmare is about? It's it is sleep paralysis, but you you, oh, wait, see, you woke up and then you're, ran you're, in? You're, 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 it feels like you're wide awake. Yeah. And I was staring at my like looking at my wall and I saw oh, this okay, spider okay. crawling down it and I was like, oh, okay, Why why am I not why am I not and this is the only time I ever had it and I was like, Why am I not 
getting up and like hitting this spider. I was so confused. And then finally, like I, I, I what I think is really, I, I actually woke, came out of my dream state. Yeah. And I was like, oh shit. And I got up and ran to the Jack Allison's room. I was like, there's a tarantula on my wall. Jack got scared as well. <laughs> and then we like pulled my bed away from the wall and like turned on the lights. It was, it, it was almost time for Jack to wake up because he works at Kimmel. He has to get up at 6 a.m. Yeah. And I was like, I don't know what to do, man. It's a fucking tarantula. And I, I was going to stay there. Jack went to the outside and, and I turned my, my room light on and he looked through the window because you could see it in the shade where I thought it was. And he came back in and he was like, you had a nightmare about a tarantula. <laughs> and it, then it, 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 it hit me. I was like, oh, my God, I had a fucking like waking nightmare. But that, that that's what I, I know a lot of people who have sleep paralysis yeah. that they see. They see old women, and they like yeah. my my friend Dan Dan Tufo, one of the Tufo brothers, saw, saw an old woman at the end of the bed, Woo. and and then there's like a shadow figure. It's really creepy. Yeah, I've had that that happen before. <laughs> my my the worst for me because I'm I probably twice a year I'll get the sleep paralysis, but the worst for me was. The worst thing is when I'm like sleeping because sometimes I'll sleep on my stomach, and if I'm like sleeping face down, I'm just like my face is just oh, in the pillow, oh my God. and so like I'm just like I can't move, and I feel like I can't breathe because I'm just breathing in like pillow, and it feels like 40 minutes is passing, but apparently, but I've been to some sleep doctors, it's only like it's actually only like 45 to 90 seconds of real time, but it just yeah. feels interminable. Hmm. It's crazy. It's uh, yeah. That's 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 miserable. Your body's trying to kill itself even, <laughs> in, even while you sleep. Hey, I want to hear some good uh, sleep paralysis stories. So if you got any good ones, uh, 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 tweet us at tweet them at us. Uh, hasht, hashtag hashtag uh, stiff sleeper. <laughs> that's the one. <laughs> They're gonna get a different story. <laughs> I was gonna say something like spook. Uh, give us your spookers or something. Oh, give us your Mike. spookers. <laughs> oh, Jesus no, no. <laughs> Jeff is wincing. <laughs> Do not use that. <laughs> um, well, what are you gonna say, Jeff? I'm sorry, I cut you off. If you had a, a, oh. a sleep paralysis story, well, do you, I'll give you guys the fast version. I I was at my dad's. And he lived in the in the middle of the woods at the time, so like all he had windows everywhere, and I I I was like you know paralyzed, and I opened my eyes, and the TV was in blue, like it was all blue, and I saw my my grandma had just passed away, oh, and I saw like five of her faces circling above me, oh, and I was God. like I couldn't move, and then I closed my eyes, like please go away, please go away, and it went away. I popped out of my uh, off the like the blow up mattress, ran to my dad's door, and I was about to knock, and I'm like. I can't knock. What am I going to say? I saw a ghost to my dad. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm pussy. So I went back to sleep. It happened two more times. And every time I popped up, I'm like, I have to knock on his door. What am I going to ask? Sleep at the edge of his bed? That's like, fucking... can I sleep on the floor? And I, I never did it. How old were you? Oh, man. I think this was, I was in high school. So it was. Uh, All right. Yeah. yeah, high school is the cutoff. You can you can maybe get away with sleeping at the edge of the bed on like in middle school if you're yeah. sixth or seventh grade, yeah. maybe. Yeah, what well, like you can't do that as a high school. <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared, Daddy. Can I sleep here? <laughs> My dad has passed away, and. I would not want his ghost to visit me. Uh, like, uh, <laughs> I miss my dad terribly, but don't come back as a ghost. Yeah. I would, I, I would punch him. I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to. I don't want to see a ghostly visage ever. Well, yeah. You would punch your ghost dad. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what the fuck he'd be thinking. <laughs> He shouldn't fucking come and, and scare the shit out of me. <laughs> now he'll probably do it, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to see, like, what a, what a terif- that, that would be a terrifying, my grandparents, I don't want to see any of their ghosts. Yeah. Uh, maybe a ghost pet would be okay. I don't care about that. <laughs> but, but I wouldn't want to see, I, I'm terrified of seeing ghosts, which you know. I had a, <clears throat> I had a pitch for a, a like a, Kind of, I think it could be a kids movie. But there's also like an adult version, um, but it's like a ghost zoo where kids are trapped in like a haunted zoo, and you you get like animal ghosts. So that they're spooky, but they're not like yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I think that's kind of a cool idea. You see any ghost, it's over. Like yeah. once you see one ghost, your life is like there's ghosts exist. Oh yeah, no, it's, it, that's that's a life changing thing. <laughs> yeah. And also, I had no idea that Nick uh, wants to be the next R.L. Stein. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha,
<laughs> All right, let's talk about uh, let's talk about this ramen restaurant. Um, so Hokkaido Ramen Santouka. Uh, I'm sure I'm butchering that. I'm doing my best to uh, 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 get the uh, the Romanji syllables as much as possible. Um, have is this a place you you've been to before, Jeff? Yeah, I actually. So there's two places. When I used to feel homesick in college, I used to go to Costco, just because every Costco looks the same, and I oh sure walk yeah things. And then uh, here in L.A., I was going to Costco, and then I found that the there's little Japanese like marketplaces, like little villages kind of thing. And uh, I started going to this one long time ago, and and I was eating ramen there. And then all of a sudden, the ramen craze hit L.A., and everyone's you got to try this one, you got to try this one, you got to try this one. And I was like. The best one is still over there. Like yeah, the one yeah, I've yeah. been going to. So yeah, I've been going there for years. I just uh it's kind of a fun little thing, like kind of a nerd where I'll go and look all like the the anime books and stuff like that and all the little trinkets and toys and stuff and then I'd go eat ramen and then hang out for an hour and go, I better get back before traffic starts. And then <laughs> it is, it's it's a trek from where we live. The yeah. the, the place and I, I didn't realize that I had been there before because I'm a forget forgetful fat guy idiot and um <laughs> that's uh, not helping <laughs> oh whatever i'm i'm so i'm in it now who cares when we were throwing away extra large shirts and my mom was like you're not gonna wear extra large again i was like my mom just visited and she helped me clean out my house i was like i'm not gonna be extra large again what the fuck uh anyway uh uh i had gone there before with armin weitzman uh, who love who loves the place and he, he like you he's he's got great taste in food he's a, a f- that term foodie is kind of shitty are, are, are you are you do you like is it specifically Japanese food that you have like a that you that you really go all out on or is it or is it every kind of food I I think mostly it's uh, Asian food like Korean food is awesome like yeah like, like the big Korea town here in Los Angeles and like Korean barbecue is amazing like. All these noodle dishes and stuff, but yeah, I think it's mostly Asian, Asian yeah. stuff that I I go crazy on. I feel like people who who are, who are really good, uh, who have like really good judgment of food. This is what I've experienced at least. Love Korean food. I feel like that's like a common thing. Yeah, I like like and and it's like you and Armin both love it, but then there's like other people I know who who like. They're big time foodies and they love Korea. They love love Korean food. So this I don't know. This will fit your theory. Yeah, this will fit your theory, Mitch, because I know you don't respect my opinion, but <laughs> I don't love Korean food. I, I think it's good. I would have had it. It's 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 very good. But I tell you, any place I got a man the grill, I'm like, oh, what, what what's going on here? <laughs> I gotta fucking work the barbecue. Like that's your job. I I, I didn't like it, and it was basically because I didn't like kimchi, and then I grew to tolerate kimchi. And I now lo- I like Korean food way more, and 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 it is just about those different meats and the flavor, and 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 and, and I, I I enjoy it, but I, I get it. But also I I think of you as a guy who does like good food. Weirdly enough, hmm. I don't respect your opinion. But, <laughs> uh, I, I, you, uh, you know you 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 like good you like good restaurants. You know good spots. Natalie, I feel like shepherds you a little bit. With yeah, that. she's a she's she's the real foodie. Uh, but yeah, I don't I like. Uh, are are there Korean restaurants you go to where you don't have to do that labor? Oh, for sure. Okay, that's just it's kind of just like a fun fun thing. I mean, it's it's a staple in, in like for Korean people, like they they go all the time. But um, I went to this food court that was amazing in in Koreatown, <clears throat> where it was just like every like it's all, it's like an American food court, but it's all different Korean food, and it was just like almost like I was in a sitcom because you could just see. Each person is a master at what they're doing. Noodles, yeah. dumplings, rice dishes, all that stuff. And it's like, I almost was looking at them like they should fight each other <laughs> with their food, like the noodle whipper or something like that and stuff like that. But no, it's like there's the flavors are, are amazing. And like if you get Korean barbecue... Yeah, that's the that's everyone's go to. But if you go to these like these these porridge places, I go to this place that has a chicken soup, like a ginseng chicken soup. I can't even know. I don't even know the name, but it's. It's so good for you. And when I'm sick, I always go there. It's a little expensive. It's like $17, but it, it clears me up and it gives yeah. me energy. And like, I've never thought that way of food before. Like, I, I know ginseng is supposed to give you a little energy, but this food, th- this soup actually helps me. Like, I know chicken soup. It's supposed to help you when you're sick, but mm-hmm. the ginseng and all that, it just feels so good after I eat it. Ra- ramen is, because ramen is a soup. But it is it, it's 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 it is funny because I I classify it as a thing I wouldn't eat it when I'm sick yeah and I and and I, I it's it's a it's a 
because arm my, uh, front of the podcast, Armor Weissman always wants to get ramen. I feel like, and I never want to get it because it, it feels like one of those guilty pleasures. I talked about it before on here, but like how fried chicken is a thing you're not supposed to eat in sure. my mind. Yeah. I'm like, I'm not supposed to eat fried chicken. Ramen, I'm not supposed to have like more than like once a month or once every two months or something. I uh, I agree. I think it's a it's a heavy dish. It it's, really is. It's really heavy, but. This place does it really, really well. It doesn't yeah. feel as heavy as you think it would. Mm-hmm. Now, so, is this something when when you would go to Japan, would you eat ramen in Japan? Like, oh yeah, all the time. Like, there's, you know, I, when I was in Japan, I would work with my uncle. He owned a video game shop, which was amazing. Whoa, that's kid. insane. And he would close it around two or three because it was almost like a cafe where people would come in. That, yeah, and they would play video games. They'd pay like five dollars to play for a couple hours, kind of thing. <clears throat> And they could play all the used Nintendo games, and there's little arcades and stuff. But after we'd close, we'd go either to a udon house or a ramen house and, and just eat and then go home. We'd take baths, and then, like, my uncle and me would s- sit out on the – stand out on the porch in our towels, and he'd be like, ah. And I'm like, what is this moment? This is a weird moment. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it was kind of a magical moment. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, so ramen, like, like you know, just like – like uh, every every state out here has their oh ch- uh, chili spaghetti. Uh, this place is good for barbecue. Japan, there's there's every like uh, section. I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, has their own ramen, like Hokkaido gotcha. ramen, Tokyo ramen, Kyushu ramen, oh, okay. and and it's all like all these different flavors. And to me, it was just like I love I loved it. Like because as a kid, going to Japan and eating raw fish was was tough. I had to I had to grow up to start loving raw fish like yeah. i didn't love it it took me a really long time to <laughs> even enjoy sushi yeah and now and now it, it is one of those foods and we talked about it on here it's like i want the best version of it. i want to go to sugar fish which is a an, an la restaurant yeah that has like delicious sushi and and i can't i, I don't want grocery store sushi at <laughs> yeah, all no way yeah it's salty it really mm-hmm. is that's the thing i like i don't <clears throat> I'm really surprised. I get like that that there are certain foods that just like fuck it. I'll I just want, I'll get it. I'll get a hamburger from AMPM or whatever. Like I yeah. get I get there's certain foods where I kind of get it, but sushi is one where like I just don't understand the Rite Aid sushi purchase. Can't I just believe don't, it. it. It's so weird that people do that. The, w- the worst thing is when people go to Costco and buy that slab of salmon, that giant thing, and it and like they, lasts a while. It yeah, lasts, and they cut it up as sushi, and it's like. My mom was telling me a story. She went to a party, and they're like, Eiko, will you cut the fish? We got it from Costco for sushi. And she was like, okay. (laughs) And she was cutting slices, and everyone's eating it. And my mom was like, I should tell someone, but I don't want to ruin the party. But everyone is eating it. Like, how can you eat that? Especially Rite Aid when it's sitting out there all day, and it's raw. Oh, that's nasty. I, 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 I would never want to eat. So, unless it was specifically made for that meal, I, I don't want to get refrigerated sushi. And no I feel way. like it was such a weird thing because you're right. I feel like like uh, we we grew up in the in the '80s or whatever, and 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 I've we've talked even on the last episode we were talking about this of yeah. like even how Mexican food seemed very foreign to me. And then like yeah. as time went on, sushi became this thing in Japanese food restaurants. And then it felt like that that turnover from like eating sushi to like it being in like Seven Elevens or whatever was like kids yeah. are eating so it? fast. It was yeah. so weird. weird. It's it really weird. strange. I, I feel like if you're if you were born in the '90s, as as I imagine some some of our listeners uh, were, like you probably didn't experience that sort of cultural transition. It was just sort of that was just a staple. That was just a thing that was always around. But yeah, it is it, it is a shift we've seen in our lifetimes. And I imagine if you're older than we are, then it seems even more dramatic um I, yeah, I if, think- if, if you enjoy supermarket sushi give tweet at us what hashtag what sick Hashtag sick. Sick fish. Sick fish. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but, you know, speaking of, uh, so sushi is something yeah. that, like, you know, it, it, I think the people pursue the, uh, the the best method is to, to find a good restaurant and pursue yeah. the higher end and just spend a little bit of extra money for it. Ramen, as we mentioned earlier, I think a lot of people's initial experience is with that lower, totally. like, bottom of the barrel, like the cheapest food you can buy to, to sustain yourself. Um so it might seem foreign to go and spend, you know, eight to twelve dollars on a bowl of this when you're used to, you know, buying a packet for less than a buck. Uh, but when done well, it's like 
it's such a, a, a it's such a dish with so much depth of flavor and so much character and there's so many different varieties of it um uh, Hokkaido, as you mentioned, uh, a, a province in Japan. Uh, it, it's part of the name of this restaurant, so I guess it's a, it's a regional flavor to this uh, ramen. Is that a thing you know about, like like the the, the specific distinctions between the regions? I, I know some. I know like uh, Kyushu ramen is a is a pork broth. Okay. Like, like I think oh, like I'm I'm half Japanese. I don't even remember the name. Down in Little Tokyo, there's one called oh oh. Uh, I can't remember it right now. But it's a it's specifically a bone broth and uh, a pork bone broth. So basically they take the blood of a pig and they like they boil it with the bones and that's how they come up with the broth and they do all their special little stuff. Um I think I'm I'm not sure. I think I think like Tokyo ramen was is more of a uh a soy sauce ramen. Gotcha. And but uh my favorite of all the ramens, I think everyone has kind of a similar ramen it's just what their specialty what they're good at uh my my favorite growing up was kyushu ramen because it was this thick pork broth yeah but as i got older i like the the salt ramen yeah that's what we had yeah 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 we, we, so yeah we can go on to get into our yeah orders. let's get into our dishes yeah jeff jeff also i'm jealous of your uncle he seems like he uh was living a very fulfilling life at the time it just sounds yeah. like a nice life i feel like to- every kid it <clears throat> like had an like lied and said they had an uncle who was like in the video game industry, you oh, know, yeah. like like oh but yeah, my uncle works at Nintendo. He says that the Kid Icarus Two is coming out, you know, like <laughs> they had some some bullshit story. But you actually had I that. I did. I brought That's crazy. Back, I brought back uh, Mario Brothers Three before it re- was released out here. Oh my god! When the Wizard was like the f- popular movie, yeah, at the yeah, time. yeah. Kids were just going to see it to get a glimpse of Mario Brothers Three. But was I it also, in Japanese? I, it uh, it was in Japanese. And I had a, a Garfield game, which is the worst game ever invented. It was Gar- it was just Garfield hopping on tables and stuff, and it's impossible. It's you an can, impossible game. I like the sound of it. That's the one where that's the Garfield game where I think you like like part of there's a level where you're just trying to get through the kitchen. Yes, that's the first level <laughs> yeah. I've never passed. And then <laughs> and then you can be killed by a fly. Yeah. <laughs> it is an impossible <laughs> game. It really is. Does Garfield have a fly nemesis? It's no, it's not. No. It's not uh, uh, adhering to the source material at all. Um, yeah, my uh, my. You know brother- what should have been what? Uh, a floating Monday. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, um, you're right, Could've Mitch. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, you know what uh, game I really enjoyed? A food-based game, uh, Cool Spot. Cool Spot was good. Yeah. Oh yeah, I just saw an article on that. I forget what it was. I didn't read it. There's also a ja- there's a Japanese exclusive that's supposedly pretty good called Pepsi Man. Oh, yeah. love People like Pepsi Man. I have Pepsi Man toys. Oh, okay. Because uh, he was just like this guy that screamed and ran into things. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I love this. Why isn't it out in America? Hit, hit us up with your favorite uh, uh, food games. Uh, hashtag what? Burger time, etc. <laughs> oh, my God. Because <laughs> burger time is an option. Why am I giving these hashtags off? I should just say <laughs> something. You put me on the spot all the time. I was just trying to fucking make you do something. <laughs> um. Uh, so, uh, uh, yeah. So, so Hokkaido... Uh, Hokkaido ramen Santuko. Um, uh, what did you guys order? Well, we we went together, and the, and it and it is it, it's a drive, and and like Jeff was saying, it's located in this cool mall that used to be a supermarket, mm-hmm. and they they've now now it's kind of like a food court slash supermarket. And there's a few. I mean, this is this is one of the ones in L. A. It's in it's in the Mitsuwa market, I think, Mitsuwa, uh, yeah. uh, in West L. A. But there there are, there are a few in Southern California and, and across the U. S. and Canada. And mm-hmm. Jeff did b- look at some weird magazines. Uh, <laughs> With a lot of, uh, there were a lot of, it wasn't like a pornographic magazine, but there were a lot of shirtless, fa- uh, chubby people. Uh, it was very strange. It was a strange, uh, strange, strange magazine. It was a magazine for artists for figure drawing. Oh, for okay. figure drawing, there was yeah. a bunch of fat guys climbing over walls. <laughs> there were like, Weird. like real, yeah, real life models. Yeah. It looks like, 
one of the like if someone offered me this job i'd be like oh fucking a this sucks <laughs> uh anyways how much does it pay <laughs> uh, 150 dollars non-union <laughs> fuck oh, all right fuck, I'll take it. <laughs> don't use my name <laughs> do i have to take my shirt off yeah fuck <laughs> no thanks <laughs> there is dignity and fear <laughs> Uh, so we got we got the same thing. Jeff kind of uh, helped me navigate this. Uh, we both got the the medium salt uh, ramen, uh, and we got the combo. Correct? Yeah, we got the combo. <clears throat> and like the biggest thing is like when you even when when I was like like new to ramen, like salt ramen sounded awful to me. Yeah, it just sounds like ugh because it's naturally salty. Yeah, yeah. But I think it's more in the translation. Yes, uh, that that we get confused with. You but. don't. It's like pretty uncommon. I feel like in American food to hear salt, even though our food is so salty, it's it's rare to see like salt as part of the core flavor component. Yeah. Um, but it's not like th- this broth. I, I and I got the same broth, uh, the same broth for me, the shio ramen. Correct. Yeah. Um, so it would be like salted pizza or something, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but it's it's not like overpoweringly salty. Like, you might be expecting no. the salt-dominant flavor from the name, but, like, yeah, you're right. It's just, it's just a translation issue. It's just, it's the broth. And it's like, there's the miso broth that you could have got, spicy miso broth, and you could have got the, the pork broth, and uh, uh, was, and you could have got the soy sauce broth. The yeah. Shoyu. Uh, and, and so we, it, ours is a pork broth with salt, right? Or what, can you explain what we had exactly? I think it's just like uh, I, don't, I don't think there's pork in it. I oh, really? Yeah, I don't think so. Maybe I don't know. I it's don't just think so. it's just a salty. I think it's just a salt based. And and what, what? So what are the components of this? Because you you broke it down for me. There's a there's a like s- sour seaweed, combo, seaweed, mm-hmm. and it looks like uh, like a part of a black glove that mm-hmm. got thrown into your your soup by accident. There's a fish cake. <laughs> There's a spicy plum. Called- and what's the what is the fish cake exactly? It's like it's just a starchy like, like I think there's fish flakes. It when they make it, they put okay. fi- like the fish scale flakes inside of it while they make it. But it's just like this starchy little like, little cake kind of thing. It's like a little rubbery cake, and they just cut it and it, it, you, you they have it in a lot of their soups out there. Like, um, and then we had the obviously the noodles and. Uh, Oh God! You guys are staring at me breathing, and I'm like, I'm like, I have no idea. <laughs> there's bamboo. There's bamboo. There's bamboo shoots. Bamboo shoots. The noodles. The broth. The sour plum, which you don't like, right? I hate it's omeboshi. Ome and uh, Mike put it in his mouth. He goes, "I'm just gonna try it for the podcast." And I was like, "Watch out! There's a seed in there." And he goes, "Yup." <laughs> <laughs> and the seed comes out of his mouth. And then, and then followed by an ounce of blood. <laughs> <laughs> that is like, and, and I'll give you the description of this because it's such a, a, it's such a weirdly um, written thing. But the red pickled plum on top hints the woman with red lipstick on, adding feminine touch to the ramen. Um, and uh, I, I think that's the one element of the dish that will maybe just seem foreign to to western taste because a lot of the rest of it is just like oh this is just a a, a hearty brothy tasty yeah. soup it's a, it, it has a lot in common with maybe like a matzo ball soup you know just like a very rich yeah um yeah a uh, uh, rich starchy soup that's a funny way to describe it yeah but but like that that end of it, that plum is so weird it's such a it's such a distinctly sour it's sort a of flavor different taste yeah I, I, I liked it I did I did like it yeah it's it, it's definitely different it's like nothing I you really have I've ever tried yeah I mean it's when I was a kid that was like they would try to give me that all the time like oh you got to try this and ev- no one would understand why I didn't like it it was just because there's no other taste in America, that's similar to that. It's, sure, it's really strange. I, I I like all the components of. I don't usually love s- seaweed, but the seaweed works really great in the in the ramen. And then, of course, there's the three slices of fatty pork. Oh yes, that are amazing. Uh, and, and this place, when I went before, I I don't think I really, really like you know had an appreciation for ramen like I do now, but. It's it's fantastic. It's it's amazingly good. It's a yeah. silky broth. Yeah, like that that's what like some of the uh, the pork <clears throat> broths, the other broths are so thick because they are there's blood in some of those. Sounds awful, but I mean there is. But this one just has this like kind of a silk to it, and the aftertaste doesn't stay in your mouth as long as the other broths do. Sure. Yeah. It's I I mean like. Uh, 
I, I will say, and, and I think this is maybe a thing to keep in mind uh, if you're going to one of these places, if there's a location nearby and you want to try this out, uh, it's maybe kind of an intimidating ordering experience for a newcomer mm -hmm. because the menu is very opaque. Um, it's it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of Japanese and and some you know uh, some English that's maybe not the perfectly translated and um, some a lot of pictures that maybe it's not really clear what you would be ordering and, and little plastic bowls of fake ramen. Yeah, uh, yeah. that's a weird thing because I, I and I feel like that's a weird thing that's that's maybe unique to uh, I don't know if it's if it's Japanese or Asian restaurants. In general, but having like demonstration food outside yeah. that's like plastic versions of it that to me is, I, I think it's distinctly unappetizing to see like this plastic <laughs> display version. It is really weird. It reminds me of Problem Child 2 when they were eating the pizza. Did you remember? I think we maybe even talked about it on this podcast. I'm sure oh Problem Child gosh. 2 comes up way too much on this <laughs> podcast. But they they're eating pizza at this pizza place, and Gilbert Godfrey I think runs it at this point, and he's like, "What the?" Like he's like, <laughs> like he's like, "Junior's back" or whatever, and he's mad. Junior's there, and then a pizza fight, a food fight breaks out. And the pizza was just so like plastic and fake looking, yeah. and I remember as a kid being like, "Ugh, that looks fucking nasty," <laughs> and and that's how I feel about the ramen. Like, like you look at it, and you're like, "Ugh, that's like I don't want to eat that." Like it looks like it like gelled over. Like you can't tell if it was just a ramen that sat there forever and turned plastic or well, something. If you look it up, there are like documentaries on these people that make. It's like an art. Oh like, really? How they really? Make these fake foods and. There's stuff like where they put the paint on top of water and then they dip the like the model in and it paints it and it that's what gives it a natural look. So that's the crazy. ones we were looking at there at that ramen place have been there for years yeah. and they fade and they start to shrink a little bit and they look awful but yes sometimes those some of that food is set the cheap version of the of the uh I guess food art and it looks like just stupid. It looks like a little kid's toy kind of thing. Yeah, I uh, I was in a, a McDonald's web ad a few years ago. Uh, I've had very very little success as an actor for good reason. Uh, but um, I the the ad experience was weird because I had to hold a Big Mac and it was like a picture Big Mac. And McDonald's has their whole like they have their whole food art crew there. Like oh, they have man. like a, a trailer oh, yeah. of just guys who are just like putting this precise Big Mac together. And they've got like uh, you know. Uh, uh, like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? The air Please, spray. Oh, uh, uh, like they, they're like airbrushing the burger. They're like they're like yeah, and then they're yeah. like moving things very very precisely, like surgeons and like putting like literal paint on it to like shine it up. And then they're so probably I, so fucking nervous. That you <laughs> 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 but anyway, so, uh, so you're gonna fucking anaconda that thing. <laughs> it's really weird because it's weird to hold this thing that that is like ostensibly food but is inedible it's like yeah. just like this picture quality thing that looks really great and looks especially good on camera uh but you you know you can't eat it but you still kind of have the instinct of like oh i kind of want to take a bite of this you know and it's it, and it's like <laughs> But the thing I remember from it was um, that you had to show, like, I think it's a McDonald's thing that you have to have three points of cheese visible. Yeah. So, like, yeah. I was holding the burger and, like, some, like a food guy would come over and, like, clock the burger in my hand to make sure that three points of cheese were Is that, like, an arches camera. thing? Like, how there's, a, like, a three points to the, R, the to the M for the McDonald's? I think, it's sub, I think it represents the Trinity. <laughs> <laughs> so, can I just ask you this? Yeah. How many picture Big Macs did you eat? <laughs> <laughs> I did not eat a picture Big Mac. Uh, uh, sorry, boss. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Weiger, please. <laughs> um, all right. So, so, uh, so, yeah, they've got this. So the, the ordering experience is definitely a little foreign. Um, mm -hmm. You go inside the Mitsuwa market, and I'm not sure of all the locations. I think they might have some standalone locations. This one is kind of like a food court sort of uh, a presentation where you get these individual food court stalls. Um, but I will say that the uh, it, it, our experience, I went with Natalie, and uh, the guy was uh, working the counter. Sometimes at Asian restaurants, I feel like the uh, the reputation is that you've kind of got like a stern um, a wait staff who it isn't particularly helpful, uh, but this guy was super duper helpful. Was super friendly. It openly admitted it was his first day. Like he was like very very <laughs> nervous, which was weird. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, he was very helpful in making sure that we got what we ordered. And yeah, I actually got the same thing as you guys. I got that that uh, that shio ramen, uh, the mild salt flavor. 
Uh, yeah, it's hey, hand holding club. That's great. Uh, yeah, we're the hand holding club for for our for our dishes. And then you guys mentioned you got the combo. The combo I got mine was with a uh, negameshi, uh, aka the negi rice bowl. Uh, mm-hmm. This is Santoka's well known dish: hot white rice topped with katsuobushi, nori, and diced green onions, mixed well before eating. And katsuobushi, I looked up, I think is a a dried tuna. Yeah. Um, which sides did you guys get with got, your with your combo? I got the exact. You got the same yeah, one. Yeah. Uh, I and and I got the pork rice, the chashu bowl, chashu bowl, yeah, yeah, uh, which was which was delicious. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, very tasty. I also got myself a diet coke, but yeah, no, it's it's an it's it's great to eat some of that pork rice. And then you know get get a get a, a spoon you take you, you get the spoon full of it mm-hmm. and then you dip it into the ramen let some of that broth get in there and oh, it's, yeah. it's fucking delicious yeah that you know what this is a weird uh, this is my own hang up is like I'm afraid of eating things like that wrong like I'm like right. oh that's my instinct to kind of do that but I'm worried I'm like fucking it up somehow you know yeah. Um, I feel like that way, I, that, like if I'm ever at like a Vietnamese restaurant or something too, I'm just like, ah, fuck, I don't know what to do with all these individual components. I'm just going to do my best to not make a fool of myself, even though no one cares. No one's paying attention. You should just eat your food how you want. Uh, but um, I asked for uh, a fork. I don't like you eating. You did ask for a fork. I asked for a fork. I don't like re- eating ramen with, uh, I'm not very good with, with chopsticks. And so, especially with like a soup, I just want to yeah. shove the noodles in mm-hmm. my face. Yeah, he uh, did. He yeah. did that. Exactly. <laughs> he also said, let's get some gyoza. Which is pot stickers, like to go with it, mm-hmm. and then uh, he ditched that idea. Well, because there was not, I, and you know, I didn't want to mix up the restaurants because there was there. there oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there, there was. We could have gotten gyoza one uh, one restaurant over, but we decided not to do it. And then I went back to the table, and there were six glasses of water, <laughs> and uh, I was like, "Hmm, weird. This is." And I thought it was all for Slonica. I, uh, Sloniker. I didn't realize that he had gotten me three glasses of water. They're for tiny myself. little little cups. It's <laughs> not <laughs> Oh, it was it was very thoughtful. It I was, was just... it was about twenty minutes into us eating. He's like, "Wait, are, are these for me?" <laughs> I was like, yes, those are for you. I honestly didn't know. I honestly didn't. I, I swear to God, you'll make fun of me for this. I honestly didn't know if it was like a Japanese custom <laughs> <laughs> to keep six cups. You lined the the, you table. lined them, you lined up six cups, and I was like, "Is this some sort of Japanese custom?" Oh boy! Because we had just discussed about how you're half Japanese and how you you, you uh, grew up with a lot of this food, and I was like, "Maybe this is some weird Japanese shit." I don't know that the Slaughterker is doing. And then I realized, like, oh, he just got me some water. He was being very thoughtful. Uh, and I fucking slugged him down. Um, <laughs> and then also we got we got ourselves a little treat afterwards. We got ourselves oh, yeah. a couple of um, mochi or mo- yeah. how do you say it? Mo- it was mochi. Mochi. Yeah. You kept calling it mochi. I Did like, I really? Oh my god! What is mochi? <laughs> Those were delicious, but they were frozen, and they they, were- they didn't sell them at the same restaurant. And Slonaker and I put them on the windshield of my car <laughs> to have them melt quicker so we could eat them. <laughs> and like, it was almost there because they're like cream filled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, we, it was almost there and I was like, ah, oh, just a little bit more. And Mike's like, fuck it, I'm just going to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> he shoved it in his mouth. And there was a chocolate powder that was all over your mouth. But I felt kind of bad to go, Mike, you got to wipe your mouth. No, when you left the car, I was like, I got to go home and take a fucking shower. I felt so <laughs> gross. Uh, and also, at the same time, I had forgotten about a, a, a call I had. Oh, yeah. And uh, so I made Jeff sit in the car, and I had chocolate powder all over my face while I was on a, a work call. So it was... Yeah, uh, I heard I heard all you guys in work mode. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was terrible for him, and I apologize to Jeff for... Uh, <laughs> um... You heard um, Nick say, yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds real good. Uh, the Nagy Rice Bowl, I thought, is is tasty. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, It's a lot of green onion. It's and so much green like, onion. I, but that's, I, you know that going into it, though, Yeah, right? you know okay. going, right, you know good, going into that's part of the thing. I like, gr- I like green onion, but even for me, a green onion fan, it's a lot. It's, like, very, very dense. So I would just say, like, you know, just know that if that's a dish you're going to order, that it's going to be pretty intense. Natalie remarked she didn't like the green onion. She thought it was like a little. Um, she thought it tasted like it might have been frozen, which hmm. I, I don't know. I, I I suspected it was it was fresh, but maybe just so charred that it kind of like yeah. felt like some of the flavor ca- was taken out of it. Um, Interesting. But it was. Uh, it's it's definitely a very distinct and interesting dish. I think it's good. I think the combo there works well because you kind of get this little side thing that pairs. Uh, it, it's just like a nice little tangent from this 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 dense soup that you've got. Yeah. Um, 
You know what I did? I put some of those green onions in my soup. Oh, that's a good plan. Scooped it over. But there's also an egg. We forgot to talk about the egg. Oh, yeah. You get like oh, a little, yeah. little brown egg. Shit, yeah. the egg is great. And yeah. it's, it, 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 it's just in soy sauce? or well, It's like a sweet soy sauce that it's in. So it had a little bit of a sweetness to it. And it's kind of just like marinated in that sauce, you know. It's and you and I love putting that in the in the ramen and letting it kind of cook up, mm-hmm. and 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 then it's like eating like a like a, a fresh like a fresh hard boiled not not hard a soft boiled egg or something. It's it's really delicious. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, I mean, I you know. I'm okay with. I I would say like the egg is uh, it's good, but I, I feel like I it's that's not a part for me that's like like oh man you got to get that egg. It's kind of like all right that's fine. That's fine. I completely fine. disagree with you. I fucking love the egg. I, I love it's a nice little si- you know like a little side route that you go on on this journey of eating this ramen and you can eat that fucking egg and I lo- I love it. Yeah. I'm all egg. I'm all in for the egg. I like the egg. Fuck you, Wiger. Yeah, Wiger hates <laughs> eggs. <laughs> I actually like it. I, eggs are one of my favorite food. I like eggs. This egg in particular, I'm like, this is fine, but yeah. I, I don't feel yeah. like this is like an essential part of this dish. I they give it to you on the side. If they put it in the soup, it'd be like half of it in the soup. That's a different experience. I yeah, think. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, like on the side is not usually something that I'm used to. I, I'm used to having it in the in the soup. Well, you know what yeah. I think, and I think this is a this is maybe user error, but I think I should have taken that and dropped that in the soup right away. Yeah. I think if that would have been sitting in there, uh, uh, soaking up that broth for a little bit. It would yeah, have you ate fucking better. cold egg, you dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> cold sweet egg. <laughs> um, uh, let's get to our. Excuse me. Let's get to our final thoughts on Hokkaido uh, Ramen Santohuko. So there's how this will work, Jeff. Uh, we'll each go around, uh, give sort of your closing argument, uh, your overall uh, verdict on the restaurant, and then um, declare your uh, 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 declare your affection on the order of one to five forks. So we'll start with you. Okay. So obviously this is one of my my favorite places in Los Angeles to eat. So you know I'm I'm giving you one of the places I love to go. So I I. I do. I love the the soup. The broth is is thick, but it's not too thick for my my liking. Uh, the soup is the taste is just like a silkiness. With the noodles are perfectly cooked. I know it's kind of a, uh, a cafeteria style, but for me, I I love I just love the atmosphere of being there. Um, and is this your favorite ramen? This is my favorite ramen in wow. Los Angeles. Yeah, and this is this beats out like the big ramen restaurants that are popping up everywhere. And you know some of those places are going all crazy. Like if you if you want to see what really goes into ramen, watch Ramen Girl with Brittany Murphy, who is deceased. But Ramen Girl, Ramen Girl, it's an awful movie. It's like <laughs> her in Japan learning to be a master ramen maker. Is it a wait? Is it an American production or is it a Japanese it's a, movie? It's an a. It's kind of a crossover, but it's okay. American. It, it was supposed to come out here in America. Is it, it's in English mostly. It's in English. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's really weird. Ramen it's a, girl. It's ramen girl. She goes to Japan, follows a guy out there. They break up. She like cries, go, walks into this ramen place, and goes, "Teach me how to make ramen." And he's like, "Get out! No, no, I don't like you. Get out!" <laughs> and she goes, "Please, I'll come back every day." And then he's like, "Oh, who's this girl in Japanese?" And then all of a sudden, uh, she comes back, and then he's like, "Okay, you proved yourself. Let's make this broth." Kind of thing. I just I, looked I just it up really... like like you were saying that, and I assume this like, oh, this movie must have come out in like 1997, 2008. Yes, it, oh it's it's crazy that it's one of her last films. Yeah, maybe. Jesus. Oh, probably. An American woman is stranded in Tokyo after breaking up with her boyfriend, searching for direction in life. She trains to be a ramen chef under a tyrannical Japanese master. <laughs> wow, <laughs> it's uh, kind of it's kind of crazy. It's like like oh, that's your last one, and you can tell she's a little bit like. She's on the way out. Oh, my God. Way. But, uh, oh, well, that anyways. sounds like a, yeah. <laughs> uh, sounds Five like... forks! <laughs> <laughs> Stick a fork in her! <laughs> Stick five right in her. <laughs> five, for- five forks for Jeff Sloniker. Uh Real quick, under the trivia section for the ramen girl, in several sections, people are seen taking their shoes off before entering a house. This is a Japanese custom where the inside of the house is considered clean and the outside unclean. The shoes are considered part of the outside and are unclean. It is very disrespectful to wear shoes inside someone else's home. 
Do you think anyone has learned that fact <laughs> from the Ramen Girls <laughs> trivia page on IMDb? Like, is anyone like, what the, what the fuck's going on with the shoes in this movie? And it then sounds looks like the out. person who wrote that fact did learn it from <laughs> yeah, yeah. There was some guy who was like, what the fuck's going on with the shoes in this movie? <laughs> Uh, should I get to my... Go for it, Mitch. All right. Let me just say, mm 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 isn't just a song oh. by the Crash Test Dummies anymore. <laughs> oh. One taste of that salty ramen, and you're going to fall in love with it. It's delicious. I like ramen. It's very decadent. I shouldn't eat that much. I'm surprised you guys didn't laugh at my mm 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 thing more. I was trying not to. <laughs> <laughs> I think silence is better than laughing at that one. Anyways, it's not just a song by the Crash Test Dummies anymore. <laughs> there you got it. You'll be singing that tune if you if you eat at Santuka? Close Santaku? <laughs> okay, good horse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I love ramen. Um, I, I, I had a better appreciation for this place this time when I went. I would love to go back there. It's a hike. Uh, if if you live in Boston or California or if you're in Japan, uh, it, oh yeah, also hashtag. Uh, uh, what's a good hashtag for Japanese listeners? Mm. Um, Land of the Rising Doe. Ra- oh, I love oh, that. That's good. Wow, that's a good one. Yeah. Land of the Rising Doe. Hashtag yeah. Land of the Rising Doe. Uh, if you if you're in Japan and, and uh, tell us about your ramen experiences. Uh, I love it. It is one of my favorite ramen places now. Uh, I, I don't think I I don't think I could give it anything but five forks. It's great. I'll tell you what, too. And at the end, Mike goes, you know what? I'm stuffed. <laughs> he did. He looked me right in the eye. <laughs> I, I, it, was, it is a very filling meal. That, that, yeah. that, that salty... Uh, here's, like I said, it's a meal that I don't want to... Like, it's one of those things I'm like, I don't want to eat this that, that often. I'm a big guy. This is making me chubbier. I can tell. Like, it's yeah. one of those foods that you can just tell is... It, 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 Not it's, good. It's, it's a guilty pleasure, but it's it, it's it's it is so good. And and it, with with this place, I was like finishing the broth off, and yeah. I, I like I almost never ever ever do it. And I give credit to the size because we got the medium, and I was like, I saw the large come out, and I was like, oh, it would be great to have that large. <laughs> but the medium was was super filling, especially yeah, with yeah, that combination, totally, totally. the combination bowl. It was. And, and and it's just it's just top notch. If you if you get a chance to try it, and I and I know we know that this is a rare rare one, but we wanted to talk about ramen in general, anyways. And but this is this is about as as good as you can probably do in the state. So if you're in Boston or or, or uh, Los Angeles, and where's the other one in the U.S.? Is there a third? There's some in Canada. There's some um, in Canada. Yeah, there, I, there's a they're, they're scattered across. Go to the website. I, the website's mostly Japanese, but there's an English side of it uh, yeah. where you can see. I think if we click on foreign locations, it should show them in uh, in North America. Um, um, yeah, easy, easy five forks for me. Yeah, I mean it's not easy, not any tougher to get to than a than a Caro's. You know, I feel sure. like it's it's one of the uh, it's maybe a a, a a more esoteric one, but I think there are a lot of people who can try this place out or may have already tried it. Um, I think this place is very good, uh, and let me say uh, for the record that. Yummy, 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 I've got love in my tummy is not just a song by the Ohio <laughs> Express anymore. Oh, God. Jesus. <laughs> I didn't have a song in mind. <laughs> That's um, better. <laughs> uh, here's the thing. It, it, it's very, very good. I'm going to say my personal preference is that I think pho is a superior noodle oh, soup to ramen. Boy. I'd rather have the rice noodles. I'd rather have that beefy broth or that chicken broth uh, over the the starchy um, wheat based ramen broth. All right, I'm going to call bullshit on this. This is an excellent. <laughs> this is an excellent version of ramen. I, I agree with what you're saying. You never need the large at one of these places. You can always go medium or small. I went small and I was full. It was. A, it's. It's a. It like. Your eyes can be bigger than your stomach here. You don't need the large. This is great. It's delicious. It's a little intimidating of an order experience, but if you can get over that hump and be prepared for some flavors they might be not be familiar with, if you're not someone who regularly consumes this version of ramen, I think you'll have a great time. But because ramen has a ceiling for the burger boy, <laughs> I am giving this place 
a very respectable four forks. Which Hokkaido that Ramen is... Santuka, that means you're in the Golden Plate Club. Congratulations. You are so full of shit. It should be in the Platinum Plate Club. You are you're also perks... in the uh, uh, Ballpark Buds Club because Jesus we're all in the same ballpark with our scores. This so ball, congratulations. The ball, Ballpark Buds Club fucking sucks. <laughs> and also, I want to just say this. You're bringing personal preference into this. We, we, we rate these restaurants on what they're trying to do. This makes one of the best versions of ramen that there is I, I i think that this is i think this is bullshit i i think that this should be a five four <laughs> review and i think that you're full of shit look i'm not i'm these we know these reviews aren't are <sighs> etched in stone we know that we can go back and review them uh, and update them i will definitely patronize this place again and if i if i have a change of heart if i feel like this deserves a couple more tines Maybe a full fork, and then I will I will update my score as such. Um, God, can't wait! I'm on the edge of my fucking seat. <laughs> but if I'm, be if I'm being honest, if I'm being honest, just in the same way that I think Del Taco is superior to Taco Bell, and you feel vice versa, it's the same sort of thing. I would rather have other five fork restaurants over this four fork restaurant. It's still very good. That's a great score. Four forks, you should be proud. If you're in the Golden Plate Club, you've done something with your life. Like, that's like a, <laughs> you've accomplished something as a chain if you're in the Golden Plate Club. Sonder, can we? <laughs> <laughs> can we just beat him up now? I think we can. I can we got him. God uh, damn it. I, by I, the I, way, I'm not an expert on ramen. I try to do my best bullshitting. Was that good enough? You did great. <laughs> the podcast's not over. Wait oh, until we're done. Oops! Oops! <laughs> this thing so you know uh, you, you know your stuff a lot better than a lot of people. You 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 really knew your stuff. All right, good. Uh, that was Hokkaido Ramen Santauka. Uh, it's time for a new segment. <laughs> We're going to give you a pizza our minds. It's the slices right. Oh my oh, fucking boy. god! <laughs> uh. And then we got that goddamn Bob Barker, an old freak. The Price is Right, a uh, old freak. What the fuck? <laughs> All, right. All right, that was the Price is Right uh, game show theme, followed by a clip from a track from a Paul Mooney stand-up uh, record <laughs> titled <laughs> The Price is Right. They were the two things that came up when I searched Price is Right on Spotify. Um, so this is a segment that I re reverse engineered based off of, uh, we have a, a very popular segment called Pie in the Sky, and uh, a user named, a listener named Fla Blake Florian suggested an alternate title on Twitter, which was The Slice is Right. I felt that The Slice is Right was maybe more appropriate for a pizza segment, and that's what this is. Um, so we're going to build our dream pizza component by component. And here's how it'll work. We'll go around. We will start with nothing. Wait, you can... so you don't have a slice of pizza for Jeff or I? No, there's no pizza. We... We're going <laughs> Get to... this fucking segment out of we're here. We're going to make a theoretical... believe We're going to make our dream pizza, and oh we're going to build it component God. by component. Here are the rules. You can add an element... Or delete an existing element. Once an element has been deleted, it can never come back. So if someone Whoa. adds if someone Whoa. adds pepperoni and you say I'm deleting pepperoni, pepperoni's gone. Okay. Um, and when I'm satisfied, I shall declare the slice is right. So uh, Jeff, you're our guest. You can go first. Uh, what is one element you would go to this pizza? And remember, we have nothing. We don't have dough. We don't have sauce. Okay. We don't have toppings. Any element you want to start us off with. I will go with a cornmeal crust. Cornmeal crust. Like a Chicago style. Chicago style cornmeal hmm. crust. All right, if that's the way we're going. Go ahead, Mitch. I'm not going to delete that then. <laughs> if that's the way we're going. Hmm. Now, before, this doesn't necessarily have to, to go before or after. Like, if I say cheese, it doesn't have to go on before the sauce, right? No, we don't have to build it in order. Okay. Um... I will add a uh, fresh mozzarella. Fresh mozzarella. Oh, fresh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I am going to add sliced meatballs. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Jeff. I'm going to add mushrooms. Oh boy, I might have to delete mushrooms. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was creepy and sexy how you said that. <laughs> Well, we don't have sauce yet, but I'm just going to say I'm going to delete mushrooms. I'm sorry, right, Jeff. That's okay. fine. I am going to add a, uh, a marinara sauce, like a tomato sauce. What Not type? like a meat marinara sauce. 
Like, like, a, like, like, a, like a red sauce. Okay. Not like a not like a not like an overly sweet like sauce. Like a San Marino we talking or what? <laughs> yeah, like a San I don't know. What a, like like the, the kind that's not too not too saucy, not too heavy, not too uh not too overpoweringly sweet. All right, go ahead, Jeff. I'm going to add another layer of mozzarella cheese. More mozzarella. Yeah. Okay. I love that. <laughs> All right, go ahead, Mitch. I am going to add onion. Onion. What kind of onion? Chopped Hmm. What would be good with that? Chopped white onion. Okay. I am going to delete just Mitch's <laughs> layer of cheese. <laughs> You're deleting my layer of cheese? Yes. Was That's it because fucking... of the order? You didn't like the order he put it in? No, no, no. That's no. fucking <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking bullshit. I'm going to add a patty of sausage over the top of it. Whoa, like an, uh, over the whole thing. The whole thing. That's intense. I've had that once. Oh, wait, so it's it's sausage. Huh. Uh, like a giant patty that goes so over So we got the whole meatballs, pizza. we got mushrooms, <laughs> we got uh, onions, we got fresh mozzarella, and then we got a big old sausage on top of this cornmeal yeah. crust deep dish with, uh, with red sauce. I don't... I. I, I... <laughs> I don't know. Oh, so San Marzano tomato sauce. I think I got. I said San Marzano. That sounds right. That's what I want. San Marzano. Um, I don't know about this sausage patty. This is oh. like. Oh boy. But this is like. I, I, but I like Sloniker way more than you. <laughs> <laughs> so th this is like. It's not like a breakfast sausage patty. Just to make it clear, this is like. Let me just say this. Chris Farley used to get uh, the Chicago style pizza, meat lovers, with a patty of sausage on top of it. Is mm. the rumor. I, I love Farley. So I, yeah, I've never had it, but I've seen it. It looks fucking good. It looks like that meat sauce just just uh, that meat juice just soaks in there. I will say with the other stuff, it might be it might it might push it. Well, too much there. Now, well, you'll see what happens right now. <laughs> I'm gonna add pepperoni into this pizza. Oh, Whoa. gross! <laughs> Going meat crazy. Uh, oh pepperoni boy. and meatball, and then a little a sausage on top. It's a meat lovers, but it's not extreme. There's no bacon in there yet. Okay. Think about it. Oh yeah. All right. The, 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 all right. That's good. The pepperoni. That's fair. I'm going to add. Uh, fuck. What direction should I go here? Mm. You're gonna f what? Uh, you know what? <laughs> You're gonna fuck the pizza. No, you know, I'm not gonna fuck. Yeah, I am gonna fuck the pizza. The, the slice is right. <laughs> All right, we did it, guys. You know guys. what I would love? What? Someone go out and order that pizza. Tweet at us, hashtag slices, right? I want to see someone fucking <laughs> make that monstrosity. Tell us if it's good. If it's terrible, we got a money back guarantee. <laughs> Weiger, isn't that right? <laughs> this is your game. <laughs> you need receipts, right? <laughs> don't don't throw away the receipt. That was the slices, right? Just like a restaurant, we value your feedback. Let's open up the feedback. <laughs> Today's email comes to us from Sean Yuri. Sean writes, subject line, in defense of the Ziosk. Dear Nick and hmm. Mitch, I know you guys have given the Ziosk some criticism. However, for me, the Ziosk eliminates my biggest pet peeve about restaurants, waiting an hour to pay the bill and leave. Usually what happens is the waiter or waitress will check if everything came out fine and then disappear for a while. When they notice I am done eating, they will come by and ask if I want dessert. I'll probably say, no, just the check, please. They will bring the check, and by the time I pull out my wallet to put out my card in the book, they vanish. Half an hour later, they show up, and it takes my card... Uh, Show up and take my card, then take however long it takes to run it. Long story short, it's great that I can swipe my card at a little iPad on my table and leave. Sean, um, are you familiar with the Zios Sloniker? I've seen it. I've probably used it once or twice. Yeah, so if if you're a listener out there and you're not familiar with the Zios, it's basically like an iPad-shaped... Um, uh, it's a tablet that on a stand that's on the table of some chain restaurants, notably Chili's, TGI Fridays, Olive Garden has them. Um, and it, it's a place where you can, uh, the waiter will direct you towards it, your server will direct you towards it, you can use it to pay, you can ostensibly use it to order drinks and desserts, although I've never I've seen that done in practice. And it's weird and alienating, um, and it's a little polarizing, but this is someone who actually likes it. I don't know, what do you guys think? Do, does Sean make a convincing case in favor of the Ziosk? I I, re I retract my thing. I I've seen it. Yes, but I've never used it. Gotcha. Yeah, I've I've had the one where they bring it to your table, but not yeah. not stationed there. I I've seen it, it, and we've talked about it quite a bit on this podcast. Wendy's has just talked about how they're going to try to get some 
uh, Ziosk, well, not Ziosk machines, but what, uh, what, what do you even call it? Like, they're, they're uh, talking about full, like, uh, just, uh, yeah, I, I don't know if they'd be Ziosks, but they'd basically be things. Kiosks, can, I guess. Kiosks, yeah. <laughs> full size I actually, things. I actually said, what do you call it? <laughs> <laughs> Me trying to prove I'm not a dumb guy, and at the end of the podcast, I said, what do you call it? What do you call it? Um, I, so Wendy's making that move. Ugh, it's tough because then I I was about to say I like Wendy's and I like now I like Ziosks, but it 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 Ziosks are strange because it does put some people out of jobs. But I know what he's talking about as far as swiping the card and waiting around forever. Sometimes you just want to go. Sometimes you're in a rush, and mm-hmm. that that is helpful. I mean, like I kind of like a version with where, where you have to have. There's still this wait staff, but you do have a Zeosk, and if you want to, if you want to check out right away, you can do it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I feel like Zeosks are the wave of the future. I, I do feel like that's a thing that's going to change. I, 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 it's unfortunate that people are going to lose jobs bec- from machines, and it's going to happen to all of us. In fact, I think it's. I think Weiger is a machine. <laughs> so I am already working with a robot right now. And it's not too bad, but it, it, it it's 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 rough because people are going to lose jobs over it and it's it's and it's and it's all based on us being more comfortable or or things being just a little bit more convenient. I mean, here's the thing to 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 the guy who wrote in. Thank you for the the question, but just fucking wave your arm or, or get mm-hmm. the server and tell them to fucking swipe your card too. I mean, that, you can, you can easily do that. It, it, like, uh, I think you, you, you run the risk of maybe seeming impatient or something like that. But I also get it. I get it for the checkout thing. I just, I just, I just don't feel like these machines should completely take over. I like greeting someone. I know why, you don't like to talk to people if you don't have to. But I, I do like that interaction at a restaurant. I kind of like the ser- the dynamic with the server. I feel like that's part of the experience. I, I'm also okay. I'm, I'm more okay with it, like at a Wendy's. Honestly, yeah. even even though that, even though it does suck, and, and it, it's it's the thing just with people losing their jobs, which sucks. But uh, at a Wendy's, I'm like, I know what I want. I want to punch it in. I want to make sure I got it correct, and yeah. I just want to get my food and get the hell out of well, there. I think you're right. It's coming. It's There's no stopping it. I yeah. mean, the internet generation that we're experiencing right now is like, you, you don't want to talk to anyone. I just did VR for the first time, like that whole you know thing. And I like before, I was like, stupid, hate it. Yeah. When I got out of it, I was like, that was really cool, but I can see... People are gonna get lost in that, dude. Sure. I had the I had the same exact experience. I just tried VR just recently, and I was like, "Oh my god, this is the future!" It is the future, and this is kind of scary future, right? And we've we we finally reached Lawnmower Man three level, <laughs> yeah. of of the world where it's, it's like it, and it's coming, it's and, coming, and it's and it's gonna be a thing. I, yeah, when I was when I was like. Speaking of being scared, when I, and I think I was almost high school age. I was at least eighth grade uh, when Doom sixty four came out. <laughs> I played it a sixty four bit version of Doom and got so scared that I had to sleep at the end of my mom's bed. I had like a night terror be playing from Doom sixty four, which is pathetic. Yeah, I, Mitch has told me this before. And if you look up, like if you're out there, look at screenshots for Doom sixty <laughs> four. These are these are like models that are made with like six polygons. <laughs> They look like shit. They're not scary at all. I will say this: that there were babies crying. The yeah. soundtrack were babies crying and lambs dying. Oh yeah, it was that's creepy. a little intense. Yeah, <laughs> they, they, they 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 do. They, they it's it's a it, it was a creepy game. The atmosphere of it was creepy. Yeah, and it deals with hell. And Weiger knows I'm afraid of the devil. <laughs> Beelzebub is he's a he's a terrifying figure. Like you are scared of a lot of things. Like even. Well, there, Bub, there should be a count of how many things you said you're scared of in this podcast alone. Beelzebub in the uh, uh, or Beelzebub in the uh, or the Dark Lord. He's, yeah, he's a, he's scary. He's one of the he's he's an all time sp- uh, spooky guy. <laughs> He's an all all time spooker. Hashtag all time spooker. Can't use that word. You keep using it. Yeah, it sounds like a racial slur. It's not sound. trying to be a fucking racial term. God damn it. You know, spooker. Uh, Mike was so happy I was coming on the show because I, I 
I was gonna make fun of you. He's like, you're gonna make fun of Nick. I can't. I can't wait. You're gonna make fun of him. And I'm like, I don't know if I'm gonna make fun of you. Like you're such a nice guy. <laughs> like the only thing I can say is he's a robot. I'm like, yeah, he's a robot, all right. <laughs> I'm a nice guy, goddamn. You're a nice guy, but you're the fat guy, so it's fun to make fun of you. <laughs> you know my pain. How dare you do this? It's all the things someone has told me in my past, and I get to say it to you. <laughs> <laughs> what a fucking sell! Your guys are all sellouts. Um, uh, I was just saying, playing, playing a version of of Doom or whatever, not Doom sixty four specifically, yeah. yeah, but playing a scary game in VR, like I think it will kill some there, people. There will it's be going to. There will be yeah. fatalities. I, I've done. I had one VR, a little bit of VR experience, but it was like a couple years ago, so the technology was a little cruder. It was the Oculus Rift. I think they yeah. went out. The Vive is supposedly better. Um, but like, yeah, I went like on on a roller coaster, and like I got a little motion sick. But it's like it's like crazy. It's like really crazy that this thing that people predicted for so long, everyone was like VR. Yeah, right. And now it's here. Yeah. And it's like already pretty intense, and it's gonna go. I mean, it's gonna things are gonna be crazy. Like there's gonna be. At some point in our lives, all three of us are going to be caught pounding off while we're in some <laughs> VR world. And I'll see headset on. And I'll see a video game box on the floor uh, for uh, Cuckmaster Three Thousand. <laughs> Would you watch the instant replay of what he's going through? <laughs> <laughs> but it, it is like it's it's a weird, crazy future. I don't like what automation uh, is uh, portends for our workforce, but you know it's already happened in manufacturing. It's it's de- it's it's certain to happen in the service industry at some point. Um, you know, hopefully uh, more jobs will be created and and more people will, will get a living wage, and those people who work in in food industry will continue to uh, will hopefully get uh, uh, the pay that they deserve. Um, uh, but yeah, that's just the cruel march of capitalism. It's never uh, going to happen. <laughs> We're going to live above the the clouds, and uh, the people that don't have the jobs are going to live below the clouds. Not we. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we, we, I will definitely be below the cloud person. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> it's going to be, a, it's, it'll be an Elysium for sure. Yeah. Um, uh, but you know uh, what I would say about the Zeosk about your micro targeted question, <laughs> John. <laughs> Elysium was right. Yeah, Elysium of all the was sci-fi right. movies, Elysium is the one that turns out to be right. Elysium nailed it. Logan's Run was a bunch of shit, but Elysium was dead on. Um, all right, so uh, what I is? Hope, uh, I hope. Uh, what's the what's the what's the robot one that's that's like a, that's by the same guy from Elysium? Oh. Uh, uh, a Chappie. Oh, yeah, I hope Chappie is real. I hope Chappie's real. Oh, Chappie okay. seems fun. I thought you were going to make some, uh, like, cucky joke. <laughs> you know what? This is the first time I've seen Nick as a robot. Because he keeps starting on his thing, and then, like, we deflate him by cutting him off. But he starts up exactly the same way each time. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. A, you can see him, like, rebooting. It's yeah. <laughs> I don't have any range. Um, uh, but yeah, Sean, uh, I would say, like, as far as your micro targeted question, I see the utility of the Zeosk in this particular case. Overall, I'm, I'm not in favor of it because I like that interaction with the server and I think it clutters the tablescape. But I would say, as far as your problem is concerned, I think the issue, the bottleneck you're, you're encountering is because you don't have your wallet ready when they bring the bill. And if you need to get out of there in a hurry, when you ask for your bill at that point, when you ask the question, take your wallet out then, get your card ready, and then when they put the bill on the table, Plop their card right there or hand it directly to your server. You'll save yourself some time if you need to get out of there. If you have a question or comment about the world of chain restaurants, you can email us at doughboyspodcast at gmail.com. Check out our Facebook page, Doughboys. Sean. Uh, Follow us on Twitter at Doughboys Pod. If you have a free second, rate and review us on iTunes. Jeff Sloniker, thank you so much for coming here. Thanks for having me, guys. That was Uh, fun. Do you have anything you would like to plug? Uh, I do. I do a podcast that no one listens to. It's about. It's called the Border Realm, and it's about like supernatural stuff. It's not so much. Whoa. It's not a funny thing, but it's, it's a new podcast. It's a new great. podcast. Yeah. yeah. It's a. Uh, it's a real fun th- uh, time. It's like we just talk about. Uh, it, like the last one we talked about was a Japanese suicide forest. If that. If that has. Any oh yeah, I've heard of that. That's crazy. Real stuff going on there, and uh, yeah. So we just talk about like I. I'm the skeptic half the time, but sometimes I believe. So I don't know. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, uh, check it. And you got a Twitter handle, right? I don't even know it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't have friends on it. <laughs> what was the name of the podcast again? It's called The Border Realm. Check out The Border Realm. Uh, Sloniker is uh, one of the funniest dudes. Yeah. Um, so you want to give that a listen. Mm-hmm. Um, and that'll do it for this episode of Doughboys. Until next time, for the Spoonman, Mike Mitchell, I'm Nick Weiger. Happy eating. See ya. Feral Audio. Oh, hey there. Hi. Do you like being happy and not sad? 
You should check out the podcast Hello and Good News. Each week, I sit down with a comedic guest and tell them all about the people, places, and current events affecting the world in a positive way. Whoa. So check out and subscribe to Hello and Good News on iTunes or your favorite podcasting app. Yeah.